So Sheffield then going to get this game underway. Fair crowd behind the left-hand side. Trinity's try line they should be attacking this first half plenty of vocal support there for Trinity in the final again after two year absence when they lost here against Castleford so it's Bagnell there gives the bones to Jones ball to Jones and here comes Jones for it. gets to the 20 meter line where he's met by Sheffield tackling it's going to be first these first few minutes that's Farrell there just going to take the first uh, drive and then Webster following through the two Sheffield 11 and 12 both wearing egg guards that's Maguire, Maguire and Carr the two Australians that's back to Nigel Wright well positioned good chase by Farrell there to try and put him off and here's the man in at the moment and listen to the roar as Gary Jack gets the ball but uh, just not used to the turf yet just a little slip and uh, over he goes Wakefield there, caught offside, first penalty of the afternoon going to Sheffield. So, Mr Smith, who we've seen a few times this season, I rate as probably one of the best referees of the new breed. David, he's only 28 years of age, but uh, I've seen him a few times. I've been thoroughly impressed with the lad. Yes, we were just discussing this before the game, Ian, and uh, the lad's only been refereeing a few seasons and he's been quickly upgraded to grade one referee, and that just says a lot for him. You know, you don't get upgraded that quick, Ian, if you're not uh, the man for the job. Quite true, so it's Sheffield then, centre field, here comes Maguire. Number 11 there, just uh, bringing the ball up. He's been an inspiration to Sheffield since he signed from this time. The captain of Sheffield... Close the hooker, gives it to Aston, moves it out, Jack, and that looks a little bit high from uh, Andy Mason there. As Gary Jack took a little bit of a knock from that head eye. As John Glancy is pulled out just round the neck there, David. Yeah, I think uh, John Glancy just chased him across the uh, field there and just tried to uh, tackle him, and his uh, arm just over the uh, shoulder region. Mr Smith just giving him a stern ticking off there. Sheffield Eagles, Ian, six points in the league. Wakefield Trinity have got none. Do you think it'll have any bearing on this game? None whatsoever, David. Uh, one off uh, Cup Finals, Yorkshire Cup Final, and uh, Wakefield have been playing well. They just haven't had the bit of luck that uh, makes them uh, a winning side. Sheffield have uh, had three good wins in this Yorkshire Cup, beating Bradford, uh, Halifax and, and Hull, whereas... Wakefield only played a third division and one second division site, so Sheffield come here as favourites, but uh, on the day, that doesn't mean anything at all. So Sheffield then, and that's a, a drop ball there from uh, Dale Lawton, uh, Sheffield number 10, and uh, Wakefield a little bit slow, acting half back there, Nigel Bell having to dive on that ball. Here comes John Glancy, former Sheffield Eagles player, been signed on for Wakefield now for five or six years. And the Sheff Sheffield, number six, Mark Aston there, that Mr Smith has pointed out, was offside, so uh, early, early settling down period. David, penalties to both sides, nothing really, foundations, not, nothing got settled yet. No, that's right, there's no, uh, no entertaining football being played in these early stages, but by the, uh, the eagerness of both Wakefield and Sheffield's defences, Ian, you know, Russell Smith's quite right to pull both sets of uh, defenders up because they have been encroaching in that 10 so they're easy to uh, to form a good defensive stand both sides trying to uh, get on top in the defense and it's costing them so far as big fritz then darren fritz from canberra takes it up few horses on the field today this bagnell that's another mark webster crowd shouting thought it was a little bit forward going towards the sheffield 20 bagnell again distributor of many things that uh, that's Carr there, the other Aussie. Six Aussies on the field today. Three for Wakefield, three for Sheffield. Here's Nigel Wright, recovered from that uh, rib injury he sustained at uh, Salford last week. Richard Slater, John Glancy on his right, pressing forward, Trinity towards that Sheffield 20-metre line. We're on the, the fifth and last, so 
Is it going to be a little kick over from Nigel Wright? He tries it. A lucky bounce and Richard Slater's going to be in. Oh, what good fortune for Wayfield. First score on the board. Little grubber kick through. And there goes Richard Slater under the sticks. Brilliant start for Wayfield there, David. Well, what can I say? It's obviously a planned move. It's a hardly driven uh, ball. And anything happens on a planned move in. The ball was driven very, very hard to the ground. The emphasis is to make the defence fumble the ball and possibly capitalise. Unfortunately for Sheffield, there it hit a man and it rebounded up, but Richard Slater plucked that ball from out of the air there and it just stuck to his fingers and majestically strolled round Gary Jack to slide under the post and give Wakefield the dream start that they wanted. What an absolutely superb start for Wakefield Trinity. And you can tell by the crowd that that's successful. So that's Wakefield 6, Sheffield Eagles 0. Well, an absolutely superb start from Wakefield Trinity. Congratulations to Richard Slater there. As I say, managed to just pluck that ball out of the area and, and he stood Gary Jack up. What a superb sidestep that was to slide under the posts. Yes, he can, he can Richard. Lots of times you want his talents to come out and show and there he, we know what an exceptional sidestep he has and he left Gary Jack there for dead. So Wakefield then should be full of confidence. Gary Spencer trying to bring the ball clear. Here comes big Darren Fritz. He's a big lad. He takes some pulling down. Cook, the hooker there, does the job. Here comes Gary Price, losing the ball there, Gary. Quick repost from uh, Sheffield, that's Maguire. Bad mistake there from Gary Price, and uh, that's an even worse mistake from Sheffield, getting their first touch of the ball and knocking on in such a good situation. Right on the 20 metres line there and making a, a big mistake. So, at present, Wakefield have uh, settled down more to the game, that try giving them the confidence they need Sheffield just making elementary mistakes at this pr present time David that's right Ian uh, a little bit unfortunate there to knock on but uh, at play the ball you've got to try and keep hold of it you've got to try and stick to the possession because possession is nine tenths of the law Ian so Wakefield then getting that ball from that scrum and Dan and Fritz making good yardage upfield he's followed by John Glancy John Glancy checking it in strong so back of Wakefield are coming, further and further up the field, Bagnell. Picked out by Timmy Lum, who's on loan from Unslit. It's Unslit, this is their home ground. That's a nice kick from uh, Nigel Wright. It uh, goes over Gary Jack's head and makes him turn as the ball goes into dead and uh, touch judge points to the 20. Uh, didn't actually touch that. He was thinking about it a couple of times with Gary Jack, but... Uh, just a little bit too much pace on that ball. So that's uh, Maguire then, taking the ball up. He looked to lose that ball before he played it, but uh, Sheffield Eagles dropping the ball again, but it, luckily it goes back from uh, Lawton. Here's Maguire again, and he's dropped the ball, so uh, Sheffield Eagles uh, not settled at all, David. No, that's right. Uh, knocking on quite quite often now, and the losing possession obviously it gives Wakefield now a lot of chance with, to have the ball in their hands, and they're obviously going to try and settle a lot sooner than than Sheffield. So here comes Trinity. Nigel right again. He sees a bit of an opening, nearly through, but Carr makes a nice tackle on him. Andy Mason goes in acting half back. Gary Price then comes wide and out. Richard Slater. Andy Mason going in at acting half back again to Bagnall. Quickly is Tim Lum up to him. Nigel Wright. Little short back to pass to uh, Gary Spencer. He tried to hold the ball up there for Gary to come on to. Here comes Bagnall again. That'll be a little chip through. A little bit too strong. That ball's gone in touching goal. So that's going to be another 20 tap for Sheffield. But uh, this moment in time. Wakefield with all the pressure on Sheffield, David. Yes, they're enjoying uh, a lot of possession through Sheffield mistakes, and uh, obviously that'll allow them to uh, gain in confidence where Sheffield really have got to settle in, and they've not really settled down yet, have they? 
No, but there's always periods in games where the other side seems to be on top and then it changes and fluctuates and the other side come back and this game just still in, in its early stages as uh, Paul Carr trying to make a good yardage for Sheffield. Here comes Lawton. Met strongly by three Wakefield tacklers. Back to Gary Jack. Under no pressure at all. Can just place that kick where he wants to. Andy Wilson brings it in play. Ball went back. Signal by Mr Smith. So Andy Wilson centre field in his own 20 with the ball. Back now. Nigel Bell, Nigel Bell ringing clear. Just nearly got round Aston there and uh, plenty of wide open spaces on this Ellen Rope pitch. Bag looking for the gaps, bobbing and weaving, making good yardage. Chunk by Cook and uh, number eight Broadbent, Nigel Wright. Trying a little dummy with the uh, Maguire there pulled for Richard Slater. Took him off the ball there. Paul Carr getting rid of his egg gear there, just throwing it to the touchline so we can tell which now is uh, Maguire and which is uh, Carr in that second row. So it's uh, Nigel Wright then from centre field inside his own half, going to kick for touch. And uh, the main thing about that is that it's gone into touch, only made a couple of yards, but uh, he hasn't given the opposition the ball. Here comes Mark Webster, back after uh, injury. It looks like he's took a hard knock there. Well, Ian, he was met quite solidly. I didn't see anything from our vantage point here of any foul play whatsoever. I just think it was a good, hard, clean tackle, and uh, Mark Webster looks to be flat out. I think the referee's got to stop the game, Ian, just to have a look at him. Lee Robinson a bit worried about him and I think he's pushed him into the uh, precautionary position on his side and he'll probably be having a look at uh, where his tongue is perhaps maybe they'll call for the doctor and uh, from the next play Wakefield lost possession it looks to be okay just a little bit fuzzy he's going into the second row Fritz has uh, just moved up while he uh, still recovers from that arc tackle from uh, Robent Gary Jack coming to bring it blind Bagnell holds him here comes Plange and uh, the Wakefield tacklers quickly in. Gary Jack going on his own down that blind side. But uh, Slater and uh, Jones make the tackle on him. Here comes Tim Lum. Gives it to Lawton. Lawton. Tim Lum uh, brings Maguire back to, to Tim Lum. Uh, then he slips the ball in the tackle. Here's David Maiko. A Wakefield lad from Prigleston. So playing again in his hometown club. Penalty that's going to be. Nigel Bell uh, just uh, interfering to play the ball. So it looks like a chance for the Eagles to, to get on the score sheet. Uh, just more or less in line with the right hand post. And it looks like it's going to be uh, Mike O's going to make the kick, David. Well, Ian, you know, as the ball goes on the ground, to play, you know, for the player to play the ball, it's therefore in play and players can strike for it and uh, kicking through at the play of the ball is in my opinion not uh, a technical offence I think really what, the, what the, the game should have carried on there with six more tackles to Sheffield Eagles and not the penalty that was given so uh, Michael then with a chance to put his side on the score sheet and he's missed it, he's pulled it wide and uh, that's uh, Cook to Aston. Lawton short on the ball, but checking well there by John Glancy. Timmy Lum then to Aston. Switch inside to Farrell. Farrell, he keeps the ball alive to Timmy Lum. Timmy Lum, nice sidestep, but lost the ball there. Looked like a knock on. Gary Jack backing, it, backing him up there, but uh, again, Sheffield not putting the pressure on, not getting near the Trinity line. Losing possession again, David. That's right, that, but that's twice we've seen Tim Lum break the Wakefield Trinity defensive line. We've seen him when he's played for Unsley and when he played against Wakefield. He scored two tries in a pre-season friendly. We all know how quick he is off the mark. I think Wakefield Trinity have got to uh, rise to that when he, when he uh, gets the ball tonight, today. Penalty there to Wakefield. Head eye by Mr Smith, he says, on uh, Gary Price. I think 
it was uh, Cook, the hooker there, that uh, got pulled out for that one. So Nigel Wright then with a nice kick down the touchline. There he goes, a good 30 metres. Brings play to within 10 metres of the Sheffield 10-metre uh, line, 20-metre line. Comes centre field, John Glancy. Gary Jack, and we notice, right up in the line. So Sheffield are wide open for that uh, little chip kick through. He's trying to organise his defence there. Gary Jack just behind the, the line. He's only a yard behind the, the line as uh, Mark Webster looks like he's recovered from that heavy tackle. Gets play inside the... Uh, Sheffield 20, Bagnall, big Darren Fritz comes on the charge and just an ankle tap, uh, just stopped him there. So Wakefield then, in with a chance. Nigel Wright drops a goal, so a uh, beautiful bit of play, good pressure from uh, Wakefield and a nice drop goal from Nigel Wright, David. Yes, I always maintain, Ian, that uh, you, once you get into an opposition's 20 area, you should always come away with at least a point, and especially when you're six points to nil up, that one point just puts you within a, you know, that imaginary figure, one point within a try and a goal. So uh, Wakefield certainly now establishing him themselves very strongly in these early stages. So at 7 0 after 17 minutes, that kick down to Bagnell gives it to David Jones. So uh, Wakefield being in full control so far this afternoon. David Jones right on the centre of uh, the 20 metre line. Gary Spencer. Helping his forwards out, just coming into the attack. Tackle by Farrell. Here comes Glancy, looking for those gaps. Making the valuable yardage, getting out of that danger zone. Mark Webster. Mark Webster only held by one leg from board bench, but uh, the other helpers then come in. Bagnell. Bagnell's running it. Lovely little ball to Fritz. Here comes Fritz on the charge. Got Andy Mason with him. Fritz still going, Fritz still going. Gives it to Andy Mason, but uh, Plange covers across beautiful. So Wakefield here on the tack. Can they bring it left from Bagnall? Ba Bagnall must score, must score. Yes, oh, Slater drops the ball, but uh, Sheffield man interfered, was offside, and that's going to be brought back for a penalty to Wakefield. But uh, had a magnificent chance of scoring there, Wakefield, David. Well, that would have put a real firm footing on this game had Wakefield Trinity have converted that move into a try. But however, Darren Fritz, a majestic run down this left-hand side as we look at it. And Jeff Bagnelli, and just as we're talking, has gone over for a superb try from a quick tap and play the ball. So, Jeff Bagnell, I think it's his first try this season, Ian, and he'll be really pleased about that. Yes, you could be right, David. Uh, we, there was just a little bit of controversy there because Carr in that moment when Wakefield were previously going to score just interfered with play, he was in an offside position, didn't get the sim bin, but there was a, a penalty to Wakefield. Bagnell noticing that Sheffield won't geared up, one at home, took the quick tap and went over, David. You know, he's been an exemplary captain all season and he just spotted the gap, as you say, and just on this left-hand side, very close to touchline. And he's established Wakefield Trinity in a very, very commanding position. Absolutely superb move. What I'm going to say in that Darren Fritz, I feel, when he made that break earlier on, if he'd have looked to his left and probably, tr you know, tried to travel left rather than going and looking for the speed man Mason, we had a little bit of an overlap. But however, it doesn't really matter in because Bagnell there, opportunist try. That's Do you think the Aussie games took anything out of it? It could well be, but they had four players missing from that game. Um, you know. The four players were the Australian contingent, really. Maguire, Carr was missing, and just a couple of other players. But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously a big game like the Australian game could have done, but uh, they've not established themselves in this game so far, uh, uh, Ian, because they've made far too many mistakes, elementary mistakes, little knock-ons here and there, have not kept possession for the full six. Thanks, Frank. I thought you forgot my name. <laughs> so, you... Yeah. John Glancy then, Wakefield well on top at present, here comes Fritz after that storming long run and boy this guy does take some stopping when he gets going, he's a big lad, he has more pace than I thought there when he made that break David, he surprised me. Yes those long legs, he really stretched them out and uh, there was nobody making any impression on him whatsoever from the Sheffield side and uh, well I don't think he's quick enough to go the length but uh, certainly quick for a second rower. Nigel Wright doing a lovely little bit of skill there just to beat those would-be tattles of Sheffield. 
as we go to the last and that's a kick from Bagnell finding touch shovel Sheffield back down into their own half so uh, Wakefield in full control so far let's hope they keep this up because uh, they're keeping it the tackles and not losing much ball they would just had that one from Gary Price and I think that's probably the only ball they've put down David that's right the team that obviously makes the less mistakes in a game stands more chance of winning it at the end and so far Wakefield Trinity have made very few mistakes compared with Sheffield who have made a, a lot so obviously Wakefield really established now in this game and Sheffield have got it all to do good tackling there from Benson took two on the trot as Cook comes trying to get clear but uh, Sheffield really on a down at present not many runners come in looking for Farrell on the inside ball met by Mark Webster and uh, Gary Price solidly there so Cook then to, to Lum a long ball to Aston Longer to Jack, Gary Jack comes inside, keeping the ball alive, back to Aston, got Michael free, then to Plange, good little bit of play from Sheffield there. We're on the fifth and last, Wakefield's. Aston then with the kick, a little chip forward for himself, picks up, back inside, and Wakefield then have got possession, but uh, it looks like he's got uh, Wakefield for offside, said it took a Wakefield man there, and that's going to be a penalty to Sheffield. That's right, Ian, and the decision was correct. Nigel Bell there just chasing playback, stuck his arm out from that uh, pass from Mark Aston. He, it, the ball touched him and John Glancy picked it up. So, uh, yes, the referee's really right, but this is the best football that Sheffield have had so far this game. Right, like they've lost the ball again, and uh, Wakefield have recovered, and uh, that's Timmy Lum trying to get Gary Spencer down. Gary Spencer right on his own post, 10 metres out. Wakefield with the ball, stumble there from uh, David Jones. Sheffield wanting to bring uh, Hugh Waddell on for a Lawton. Trying to get the next stoppage in play as uh, Gary Price just gets over that 20 metre line, centre field. As Nigel Bell, then to Big Fritz. Having a big game so far, slips the ball, a little bit dangerous, but uh, manages to Nigel Bell to Benton, to Andy Wilson for a little run. to his opposite number, but... Uh, Sheffield cover there, but uh, making good yardage there, Wakefield with possession. Bagnell again. Nigel Bell, he'll probably have a little bit of a run. So we're on the fifth and last. Ten metres from the halfway line in their own half, Wakefield. Centre, centre field, Bagnell gets caught at acting half back there. Knock on, so that's going to be hand over a little bit. Uh, caught there, uh, Jeff Bagnell, Dave. A little bit scrappy at play, the ball, Ian. The guy that plays the ball should always give his uh, acting half-back plenty of chance, so that means, you know, really standing upright and square so that the uh, markers can't get round to him as quickly as, as they can. That's Michael then with the ball, coming in field, 10 metres from the 20-metre line of Wakefield as Lawton takes it up strong. Sheffield trying to get pressure on the Trinity line, haven't been near it so far this afternoon after 20 minutes. Aston, little bit of a fumble there, and then another fumble to Carr, but uh, it comes off for him and he makes good yardage inside the uh, Wakefield 20. This is the closest they've been to the line. Little chip through. Looked like he was took off the ball there. That's going to be a penalty to uh, Sheffield. Timmy Lum, a little kick through. Darren Fritz uh, just doing the little shoulder charge on him, David. Yeah, that's right. But uh, obviously there was no chance there of Tim Lum getting to that ball before any Wakefield defender. So Russell Smith right to give the penalty and right to not give an obstruction try in. So that's Cook then that's going to take the tap. Aston wanting the ball, I think he's uh, probably going to have a kick at goal, David. Yes, obviously what they'll try and do, Sheffield, now, Ian, is, uh, is get some points on the board, because as the game goes along and they don't have any points on the board, confidence will be very, very high in the Wakefield Trinity camp, and Sheffield will try, but actually, Ian, they've taken a quick tap. That, what can I say? They've come back a good 15, 20 metres there to tap that ball. Can't understand that at all, David. No, they're looking a little bit at sixes and sevens as Wakefield go crashing in and shove Paul Carr back. I thought he was coming back to have a kick at goal myself, Aston. Probably they wanted a little more yardage to put a few moves on, but uh, they've done nothing that's uh, been untoward yet to Wakefield. As they take it left, Aston loads a little ball up for Hugh Waddell and he comes charging through. Here with Dillon for Lawton. So Gary Jack in a, acting half back. He's going to go blind. Going for that try. 
we're on the fifth and last and they're meeting out from the Wakefield line here comes Tim Lum makes a little kick ball goes to ground it's off a Wakefield player so it's back to one again everybody seemed to be stood watching that ball there David and uh, I'll bring you in when I get chance just to your thoughts on that as Michael gets tackled centre field so Sheffield then with their best moments in this game so far in the Wakefield 20 Wakefield defending desperately Hatcher made enormous amount of tackles so far as Andy Wilson tries to come in and get that ball out and Andy Wilson manages to get possession it was all back by Gamson so I'll bring you in that point David that just happened earlier on on the far side everybody seemed to be stood watching the ball that's right Sheffield players alike they uh, they didn't see that it touched a Wakefield Trinity man it was definitely play on everybody was uh, looking at the ball as if it were going to explode in the face and when uh, Gary Jack realized that the ball had come back to him he quickly dropped on it Sheffield got six more tackles and really bombarded the Wakefield Trinity line but the defense held solid and from that resulting chip through by Tim Lung there again uh, Wakefield Trinity get the ball with through Andy Wilson so it's Fritz bringing play up to halfway. So the Wakefield pack, uh, I would think, are really on top this afternoon so far. Bagnell then to Nigel Wright. Inside then to Gary Price. Gary Price coming across the field. Gets it out to Andy Wilson. Ties a little chip down the wheel. That's gone to, to Gamson. But to referees, rule the knock on. Well, he said it held his hand, but... Uh, we were in a good position there, David. I think uh, it just touched his foot. What do you think? I don't think it was a knock-on. Very, very uh, hard done to there, Sheffield Eagles. The lad actually touched the ball with his feet. And had he have been what I would call uh, an out-and-out -out winger, a, a winger with pace here, and that could have been a try for Sheffield. Certainly could, David, as uh, Wakefield got possession. Andy Wilson gets the ball from Bagnell, takes it deep into the Sheffield half. Where we have Nigel Bell, Nigel Bell making good yardage. Jeff Bagnell goes in at acting halfback. Are we looking for a switch? John Glancy, but uh, Wakefield not running there as strong as they have been doing. The forwards are making inroads in there, and John Glancy just fumbles that ball. So uh, Wakefield have just caught the Sheffield habit a little bit, did it? That's right, just a few mistakes creeping into the Wakefield side and uh, while ever they keep making mistakes, you see Sheffield will probably try and get a grip on this game so it's a bit scrappy at the moment, this first half. So that's Eagles' possession with Price, the centre, just linking in. Aston then brings it this side to Hugh Waddell. Here comes Jerry Jack trying it close up, uh, missed him out and it went to Gamson and uh, Mark Gamson was well taken there. Plays the ball to himself and he's met by Richard Slater just short of the halfway over this side. So it's Cook then gives it to Timmy Lum, a long wide ball to, to Aston and he's well taken there by Darren Fritz, spotted him beautiful. Lost yardage there, Sheffield with play and we're on the fifth and last as Timmy Lum then keeps deep down the Ellen Rope field. Andy Wilson just going to let that go in a touch. A good kick eventually goes into touch. Eight metres from the uh, Wakefield try line, but uh, it was good defence five minutes ago from Wakefield when they had to make at least 18 to 19 tackles on their own line. So if they keep that th up all through the game, David. Bagnall. Andy Wilson. Yeah, brings it clear yeah if they keep it if they keep that uh, that defense up Sheffield are gonna really have to work very very hard to get any put sort of points on the board whatsoever it's the defense at the moment of Wakefield Trinity that's the difference between the two sides and from an atmosphere David the crowd's gone really quiet at this moment in time you can't hear a pin drop on the ground yes there's certainly a lull in the in the uh, in the crowd's uh, uh, noises but um, but Wakefield Trinity oh that's that's a d terrible mistake from uh, from Darren Fritz there. As soon as the Sheffield Eagles uh, team get the ball though, Ian, directly underneath neath us, that's where the main contingent of Sheffield fans are. And as you can see now, the, the, the cheers are building up, so they'll be expecting their side to do something from this scrum. So it's Aston. Wide ball to Price. Price brings it back to Aston. Then to Farrell. 
and then they've lost about 20 yards that's back to Aston Aston trying to get clear of Richard Slater but can't manage it but a uh, little bit of ineffective play there from Sheffield didn't make inroads inside the Wakefield 20 at all like they should have done after getting possession from that Fritz uh, drop ball Wakefield just making the mistake of late never played the ball and that's a penalty to Wakefield good decision from Mr Smith the referee just threw the ball through his legs David I firmly believe that he actually got a foot to that bully and but uh, only video will tell I, I think that he did get a foot to it and I think that it was okay but uh, Russell Smith right on the spot gave the decision taken down by Farrell and Michael John Glancy makes that good yardage up to the 10 meter line before the 20 they come Wakefield then Gary Price Gary Price there uh, eye on the man drops the ball and uh, what can we say David well Ian I don't think you know this because you were having lunch with the sponsors before the game but uh, Gary's wife Linda's just gone into hospital just about half an hour or so before the bus was uh, ready to leave to have a baby and uh, Gary's probably got his mind on that I don't think Gary Jack's mind's on it as David Jones goes down the wing oh I thought he could have slipped that ball inside there but Wakefield getting that possession from uh, Gary Jack's fumble as we were just talking about Gary Price's fumble I don't think his wife's got into hospital David we no. can't put that down as his fumble no that's right but uh, Gary will obviously have his mind on it and uh, you may see because of that uh, that David Toplis decides to bring Gary off and uh, probably replace him with uh, Billy Conway here comes Big Fritz storming run towards that Sheffield Eagles try line eight meters out now Wakefield all the pressure on here comes Gary Spencer tech nigh there was he no as Gary Jack comes away then to Michael plenty of distance here for Michael Michael going on his own but a lovely tackle back from Gary Spencer and then plays it to himself and then don't know what the referees decided yeah what happened there Ian is that uh, the Sheffield man played the ball to himself and Richard Slater wasn't the regulation five meters away from him and therefore uh, he gave the penalty and in my view it, it was the right uh, the right decision Ian nice kick there from Gary Jack brings play to within 10 meters of the Wakefield 20 line but uh, Wakefield an excellent chance here of scoring a try David that's right from Gary Jack's mistake Jeff Bagnell quite quick just to jump on that loose ball and he put David Jones away and had he have passed to the supporting Andy Mason anything could have happened he didn't he opted to keep it and uh, Wakefield Trinity fluff the next attempt and Sheffield came right up the field from that so uh, Sheffield now inside the 20 that's Maguire I haven't got the proper studs on for the Ellen Road turf. Won't be used to this kind of uh, conditions in Aussie. Don't get anything as lush as this. So Wakefield then. Defending their own 20 metre line. Aston then with a little kick towards the corner. David Jones makes a mess of that. Gary Spencer has to uh, dive on that and that's uh, the nearest uh, Sheffield's come to score in a try, David. That's right, there was uh, definitely panic stations there as David Jones fumbled that ball, but Gary Spencer, good positional fullback. That's one of his major strengths. He's always in the right position, and uh, he was there to just drop on that ball over the line as Mark Aston come towering down on him, but uh, it's a dropout from under the post from Nigel Wright. It's a good dropout as well. Goes right into the Sheffield half, picks Gary Jack out. Good chase out from Wakefield as Gary Jack comes this side, but uh, well taken there by Nigel Bell. And Gary Jack there knocks on as he gets up. Referee says to Mr. Smith, knocked on. And I think we'll have to have a look at this ball at half time, David, because both sides are lately seem to be dropping it. I think as somebody told him it's an unexploded bomb and nobody wants to touch it. Yeah, the, the Ellen Road ground staff have uh, covered it in butter. But uh, no, definitely, Russ Smith unsighted, looked to his touch judge. Touch judge was right there on view. And he said, yeah, definitely he knocked on. Andy Mason's got a chance to run in. Yeah, and lovely ball in sight to him. Benson over the top. David Jones rides that tackle from Plange and gets on and makes more good yardage. So Wakefield then, a good 40 metres there with the ball here comes Benson Bagnell bobbing and weaving trying to get clear and Nigel Bell again gives it to Big Dan and Fritz Big Dan and Fritz oh he's having a big game this afternoon and 
What's happened there? It looks like it penalty to Wakefield. And he does his counterpart, Paul Carr there, uh, David, uh, probably having a little dig at him. Yeah, he probably don't like the way that Darren Fritz is running because he's run, running really strong and hard. You know, and the, 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 he's been the outstanding second rower of all the four second row men on the field this afternoon. And perhaps there's a bit of jealousy there because uh, he is an Australian and probably Paul Carr don't like it. So it's going to be Benson with a shot at goal. We've been going uh, roughly about 38 minutes. So uh, it's a couple of minutes to go to half time plus injury time. And uh, kick could be vital here to put Wakefield in at lead at half time at 13 0, which would be a good platform for the second half, David. Well, you know, David Chopless will be going into that dressing room and he'll, he's got 15 points clear. And he'll be saying, lads, you know, the way that we're playing, if we continue to play like this, Sheffield won't get a look in because the defence has been absolutely superb and they've played some good open rugby. You know, so at the moment, Wakefield Trinity on top. Benson then with the boots. Oh, and he makes a right hash of that. Never got it up off the ground at all and uh, it had chopped somebody's ankles off that, David. That's right, and, uh, you know, I remember him at Featherston in the semi-final, and nerves got to him and he fluffed the kick there. That was underneath the post as well, so... Uh, but Wakefield went on to win the game. Let's just hope that it's a good omen for us. As David Jones feels that drop out from the 20, brings it centre field just short of the halfway. Gary Price again then comes across this side, shoves one man off, but again loses the ball, and uh, he's lucky that the ball went backwards this time, but uh, his handling's not been all that uh, sure this afternoon so far, and Gary, I think he'll have to have some uh, resin on and... Uh, that at half time. Gary Bagnell, uh, Jeff Bagnell tries to block the bind side, and Mr. Smith says he was taken eye there. And uh, game, uh, as you say, David, it's got a little bit scrappy, hasn't it? You know, it's not been a classic by any means. Well, Ian, you know, I like a good, hard, clean game of rugby, and uh, Sheffield are trying to play it too hard, they're going too high. They're making too many mistakes. They can't get a grip on the game. It, it's, it must be a nightmare for Gary Etherington. He'll have a lot to say at half-time. But while ever this is going on, Wakefield Trinity will just keep on playing like they are. And maybe you might see another score before half-time. And I think if we do, that's the end for Sheffield. As Fritz takes it up, but he's met uh, strongly by Cook and Carr. Personal battle going out there between Fritz and Carr. They, they're just... Uh, Passed business cards there to one another, I think. They had a little whisper to one another there. As uh, Nigel Bell brings it up this blind side and Wakefield getting inside the uh, 20 of uh, Sheffield's. As Nigel, but Nigel Wright lines a lovely little gap onto uh, Gary Spencer and then Benson, but good play from uh, Wakefield there. Oh, and a nice uh, little fist of cuffs uh, going on there between the two Aussies. Uh, Jack and uh, Benson, uh, David, so the Aussie contingent really fired up today, David. Well, they must have all been watching Frank Bruno last night to get the emphasis to uh, to do something like that, but Benson, Ian, professionally, he was out of order. Wakefield Trinity had split the Sheffield defence instead of getting down to playing the ball and not letting Gary Jack get to him. He threw the ball down and he launched a massive attack, flinging arms at, um, at Gary Jack, and it looks like... The Sheffield Eagles uh, players will get the penalty and the pressure's eased. That could have been a try for Wakefield there from that build-up and that could have been the end for Sheffield and instead Peter Benson opted to punch uh, Gary Jack's lights out. Who threw the first one, David? Was it Jack or was it Benson? I'm sure it was Benson, but only the video will tell. We're having a good discussion about it anyway in middle of field. Yeah, well, well, the, the three officials are there. I would have said that uh, the touch judge, obviously on that far side, he was the closest. Let's see which way the penalty's going. And he's looking in his pocket here, and he's Mr Smith, so it's a yellow card for somebody. Wakefield 4, I've heard, David. Wakefield 4, that's Benson. He's the first man called out, but I haven't heard a Sheffield number one called. Yep. He's going for 10 minutes, Ian. And Gary Jack's now going to get 10. Yes, he's got ten as well, but Benson was the first man. I think he was the instigator, and Gary Jack retaliated. And retaliation, Ian, gets as much punishment as the an initial offender. And uh, they're both going to have to cool off. 
The crowd don't like that at back of the post, David, so uh, uh, I don't think they'll be so, sat next together on the touchline, Benson and Jack David. No, that's right, they'll, uh, they might as well go and sit in the dressing room, Ian, because we're very close to half-time, and that's where they're going to have to stay for some eight minutes or so after it, so... But we're, down, we're both down to 12 men, there's no real advantage for any side. Sheffield, though, without a full-back, David, just have to alter their line-up a little bit. Well, uh, Wakefield Trinity have got to uh, have got to change their setup as well, so uh, it'll just be a few changes. As Farrell makes a lovely break, then he loses the ball, and Wakefield then get possession. A lot of drop ball, his first half's gone down the ground. As David Jones comes in from acting half-back, we, we now half-time, and we... Tim Lund there got to... Penalised uh, Mr Smith, a uh, little few niggles gone on, spoiled the game this afternoon so far, David. Yes, uh, that's right, and you would have thought after two players being sent to the Simbin that players would watch what they're doing. Tim Lum's been niggling all game, here, and you know, I think he's going to be lucky not to get a Simbin himself if he doesn't stop it. So Wakefield then, with the penalty, down on the Sheffield 20, hear the cries of Wakefield, Wakefield as John Glancy goes to within 10 metres of the halfway line, and we must be getting close to halfway, uh, half time now as uh, big uh, Mark Webster takes that to within six or seven yards. Bagnell, here comes big Darren Fritz. Darren Fritz clawing and climbing his way towards that Trinity line. And as the Hooter goes for half time, Trinity a yard off the line, being in control his first half. Uh, first half that started so well for Wakefield, ended up a little bit scrappy with the needles and the drop balls. Not being a classic by any means, but for Wakefield fans and supporters, 13 nil is it or 11 nils looking pretty good, David. It is because it's been a game, as you say, in of uh, horrendous mistakes from both sides. It's been very, very scrappy. But when Wakefield have tried to throw the ball out, they've played some good football. I would say they've played the best football of this first half and they deserve their 11 points to nil lead so far. Welcome back for the second half and uh, Wakefield in the lead, 11 points to nil. Steve Smith, the referee, just getting a few votes from the Sheffield crowd behind us. Uh, Russell Smith, I'm told in my ear from David, and uh, no changes, Wakefield starting the second half as they started the first, same complement of players, Sheffield made that one substitution, Waddell for Lawton, he's still on, as Wakefield uh, pumped through Nigel Wright to get this second half away. Still plenty of sunshine, as you can see on the far side, just covering half the pitch now. Good long deep kick there. Mark Gamson brings the ball clear. So Sheffield then in their own 20. Got to get quickly onto the score sheet. You would feel this second half still on nil and uh, psychologically. Waddell there just slipping the ball in the tackle nicely to Cook. Raw bent, making good yardage by Webster and Bell. Going to be the kick down, is it? No, a little dummy from Aston and he gets caught though and uh, we're on the fifth and last so it'll uh, probably be a kick this time. Looks like Marco, Mike O's up to himself, climbed up behind the play of the ball and it goes to... David Jones and it's what you might say as good as a pass takes it and uh, Andy Mason goes in acting half back tries to have a little go on his own and uh, here comes John Glancy pack of Wakefield being very strong this afternoon being on top early Mark Webster, he's had a strong game. Lovely little ball to, to Nigel Wright. He's through again, he's Nigel Wright. Nigel Wright's going to go all the way. Passes inside to Gary Spencer. But Nigel Wright, what a game he's having this afternoon, David. Ah, oh, superb for an 18-year-old. But Gary Spencer, that's for Olivia. That's for his newborn baby daughter. And Bev, congratulations to you as well, my love. And that's a superb present for all of you. 
A superb break there from Nigel Wright after Mark Webster had fought courageously to get that ball away in the tackle. And Nigel Wright, superb there, sidestepped the Sheffield Trinity defence and he put Gary Spencer underneath the post. What a superb day for Gary and a superb day so far for Wakefield Trinity. Yes, it is because uh, after about three minutes of the... Uh, second half here and that had a, a, another dream start for Wakefield Trinity a try right under the post and I think if the conversion had gone over I think Sheffield would have been beyond you know getting back into this game however it will give them that little bit of confidence if they can score an early try but at the moment it's all Wakefield 15-0 is a score David three minutes gone in the second half as Big Fritz gets a good head of steam up and uh, makes good yardage gets out of his 20 but uh, Wakefield uh, controlling the game so far this afternoon. Here comes John Glancy again, done some sterling work, manages to slip the ball. Nigel Bell again and Jeff Bagnell, the captain, going in at acting half back, getting his troops sorted out behind. Gives it to Gary Price. Gary Price takes it up and there's Maguire pulled for Ed I right on the spot, David. And uh, how many times at this afternoon? Well, there's no complaints from anybody here, and it was there, it was plain, it was for everybody to see. The lad was definitely above shoulders, and uh, unfortunately, however ridiculous the rule is, Ian, and however bad we feel about it, it was a penalty. And a good kick from Nigel Wright brings play down towards the Sheffield 20-metre line as John Glancy takes it right up to that line, 10 yards out from uh, touch we are, and here comes Mark Webster, these two props, eight and ten, have done some sterling work, make good yardage and really gone into the Sheffield side. Here comes Bagnell working the blind. Gary Price still going and... Uh, here comes Bagnell again. Little short ball to Fritz. He sees a bit of a gap. Then passes on, still keeping the ball alive. And that's a try. Beautiful try there to Wakefield. Andy Mason, but... What some great passing there from uh, from the Trinity. David, you take us through that. Some Fritzy there passed on and then what a beautiful try. I thought you were just going to ask me to take it through it and then tell me all about it, Ian. But yes, I mean, what a superb day for Wakefield Trinity. I mean, Gary Price there drove it into the corner, far right-hand corner as well, looking at it. From the play, the ball, Fritz made a lovely break, passed it on to Nigel Wright and... Ian, I thought at one stage that he were tackled, but somehow the ball just bobbed up in the air, and who was there? Andy Mason. Andy Mason had to bend really, really low down to pick that ball up. It stuck like glue, and, that, and Andy Mason went underneath the post, and I think that's the end for Sheffield. So here, uh, as we have the cries of, here we go, here we go, Nigel Wright then, hoping to do better than his last one, and he does this time, so that's another six points to Wakefield. They had three absolutely superb wins in the, in the early rounds of the Yorkshire Cup. They came here as firm favourites, but they've been well and truly, and so far, well beaten in this game. It's Bagnell feels that ball, Wakefield on a high now. Sheffield, confidence-wise, must really have gone. And here we have, down on the touchline, Gary Jack getting ready to come back on. I haven't seen uh, Peter Benson yet, he's just coming out as well, and... Uh, And the Wakefield crowd behind them really singing and uh, very happy. And uh, it's going to be hot town tonight in Wakefield. The coach house here and the Wakefield Trinity Clubhouse is uh, where the function's going to take place, the after-match function. That's going to be a buzzing area tonight. I can tell you there'll be some beer flowing and some singing on the karaoke machine. So get your teeth cemented, Ian. Here comes Big Fritz. Beautiful play from Big Fitz he's a hard man to stop when he gets that pace going little chip through from Nigel Wright just varying the tactics a little bit but uh, Sheffield from Cook there down on that ball pretty quick here comes Michael and uh, Sheffield what can they pull out of this game Gary Jack and Benson now back on the field so both teams back to their full complement as Aston trying to get Farrell clear, gives it to Jack. Jack then gets Plange going, but Plange met strongly by Fritz there, and Plange not liking that. 
as a go up Fritz and uh, he's a wrong type of guy and have a go at well that's pure and utter frustration from uh, David Plans he's not had what you could call a mount of uh, possession has he today but the chance that he had to get a possession on that he got pushed into touch and frustration took over and he tried to uh, he tried to have a go at Darren Fritz it's just not on Ian so Bagnell there caught a little bit of a high one I feel looks like he's uh, legs just a little bit uh, here comes Gary Spencer Wakefield still going through Gary Spencer in the Sheffield half Bagnell lands it on to Gary Price falling more or less just as he took that ball here comes John Glancy against his old teammates he, I don't know which side he wants to be on this afternoon Right again, little dummy, little jink, looking for runners, but uh, Wakefield in con total control of this game. Haven't give Sheffield anything at all. Just Bagnell again, that'll be a little kick down towards that uh, far corner, but that looks a little bit strong. I think he's been at the roast beef in Yorkshire pudding with me before the match there as Bagsy. Just a little bit too much in it. So, Aston, no, it's Timmy Lum who's uh, going to take the champ. So Waddell and uh, Sheffield uh, haven't put much together so far this afternoon. Throwing balls all over, dropping balls. You Waddell there and uh, really look. Uh, here can this lad inspire him, Gary Jack. Gary Jack still going, can he inspire him? But uh, beautiful tackle there from Richard Slater. Come back and took him beautiful. So they've got a good line this way through Maguire. Maguire, lovely ball to Aston. But nice tackle from Slater again, that lad who gets through some tackles in a game. Aston then plays the ball. Battle, Matt, Timmy Lum to Cook. Cook going across field, but uh, Sheffield inside the Wakefield half now. Timmy Lum to Aston. To Carr. Carr gives it inside to Broadbench. Side to Price. But then they fumble the ball, and ball's knocked back, says Mr. Smith, the referee, Gary Jack takes that short ball a few Waddell, but well tackled there by Bagnell. And we're on the fifth and last. Timmy Lum, little chip over, high one this time. That's the first one we've seen all afternoon. And Gary Spencer has he taken it. It looks like a Sheffield try. Well, we'll have to see who's. Uh, looks like Maguire, uh, David. I couldn't actually see. Did you have a better view than me? Well, no, and I think what it was, quite a number of people actually went up for that ball, and uh, the melee of players obviously ob obscured the view, and uh, Russell Smith, all credit to the man, it was right on the spot, Ian, and he pointed straight down as soon as downward pressure was put down on that ball over the Wakefield line, he gave the try. Well, I know we said that it's beyond Sheffield, uh, Ian, but there is 30 minutes to go, Michael then tags on the two. The score is 21 6. And there's about, I would say, in a good 30 minutes of this second half left. Yes, can Sheffield come back? Will that give them the confidence? That's the first time they've had any chance of scoring. And it was on the fifth and last, and a change of tactics, David. Uh, instead of the little uh, short kick throw, they've uh, tried it for the first time this afternoon and got uh, full benefit from it with the high kick. Well, that's right, and uh, Gary Spencer, that's normally so very safe and secure, he was under a great deal of pressure from about three or four Sheffield players and jumped up for the ball, and I thought that he'd taken it cleanly. Obviously, it must have somehow got dislodged from his grasp, and Maguire was there to put the downward pressure over the line. So Sheffield then, here they come. Has it given them confidence to lift their game? They made far too many mistakes in the first half. They're looking a little bit more confident as they're running. Maguire gets the ball out to Farrell and the Wakefield tapplers wrap round him there. Plays the ball. Blum to, to Aston. It's nice kick down from Mark Aston. That ball just looks like it'll travel into touch. Gary Spencer just lets it go there. Brings the scrum down into the Wakefield half. 
10 metres from the Wakefield Trinity trial line, David. Yes, Ian, uh, you know, in the first half you were saying that Wakefield Trinity were on top, but at some stage the other side always gets on a roll, and I think they're enjoying what you could call a, a good session. It's a good roll for Sheffield at the moment, and they've been the best side for the last five to seven minutes. So Wakefield can't rest on the rolls, 21-0 up in front. They've got to make sure that uh, they keep that uh, pressure on Sheffield. As Jones brings that ball away, Bagnell spots a little gap round that play of the ball, makes good yardage, gets within 10 metres of halfway. John Glancy again, he's looking for that uh, gap as well, looking for support, getting close to halfway. Nigel Bellina acting half back, Big Fritz, Big Fritz gets them legs going, and we're on the fifth and last, just over the halfway line. So it's going to be a kick downfield, is it? Nigel Wright, yeah, dummy's one way, kicks through the other. It's all on his hat. Gary Jack uh, being chased by Benson, manages to evade Benson, gets the ball out, and still playing to Aston inside, still keeping the ball alive, but uh, Nigel Bell comes across. And I thought Nigel Bell was marking him there, but uh, Mr. Fink, Smith feels otherwise. Well, all the Sheffield players, uh, Ian, have been injected with some enthusiasm after that try. They're trying everything now. They're really going to take the game to Wakefield. Wakefield have got to stand firm in defence and they've got to just maintain this good attitude in defence while this shit Sheffield onslaught's taking place. Yes, a revival from Sheffield. They need it to be at one stage. They haven't been in the game and... The Sheffield... Going to have another penalty, Wakefield not the 10, so got to get a little bit of discipline. Are they going to go for goal? They're going to kick for touch and get more yardage. So Wakefield's defence is going to be tested. Comes Big Bro Bench, get to win in 10 metres of the Trinity try line. Here comes Waddell, trying to get in there, suck the Wakefield defence in, and probably then. Trying to move it wide. Cook then to Maguire. Switching it back to the blind side to Gary Jack. Inside to Plange. Plange going, but uh, Wakefield defence still there, holding solid. So that's Tim Lum out to Aston. Wider ball, lovely ball to Maguire. Maguire's going to be under the sticks. Well, the revival still goes on. Can they come back, David? A try to Maguire, looked like a planned move. Took it well, Maguire. Maguire came absolutely storming onto the ball and uh, this is the best spell that Sheffield have had in all the game. I mean, Ian, they looked really well dead and buried at 21 points to nil down. But, I mean, obviously 12 points inside five minutes has got to be a tonic for anybody. And this Sheffield side have really upped the game. Wakefield Trinity have got to do something now. They've got to consolidate the position. Yes, and uh, Paul Cass come off for Sheffield and uh, Andy Young has gone on. Kick is successful, so now have a scoreline of uh, Wakefield 21, Sheffield 12. And for the first time this afternoon, we hear the cry of Eagles, Eagles. They've been really quiet behind us. Mark Webster getting a good round of applause from the Trinity fans as he comes off. Billy Conway comes on. So, uh, Wakefield uh, under a little bit of pressure. Well, leading 21-0, did they sit back and uh, just let things happen? And Sheffield have uh, got that little bit of confidence now. The tackling department of Wakefield's got to be uh, tested and got to be coming up trumps. Here they come, rampaging. Here comes Waddell, using the pack, the Wakefield pack on long, on top for so long. And Sheffield now really buzzing. Had a little glint and uh, they're taking full advantage. Maguire wide out here, two, two tries for him in a Yorkshire Cup final. Here comes Michael. Michael met strongly by Andy Mason, but uh, Mr Smith says it was high. And uh, Wakefield giving silly penalties away, David, and pulling sends under pressure. Well, that's what Sheffield did in the first half, and they got well punished. 
But what's happening here is the ball's been kept out of Wakefield Trinity's hands and they've not been able to establish themselves firmly in this second half like Sheffield weren't allowed to do it in the first. So come on, Wakefield, let's really consolidate in defence and try and grab this ball. So here comes Sheffield again with big broadband. As David says, it's been all Sheffield. They've had all the play. They must have had the ball for the last five or six minutes at least. As Waddell bursts through tackles, the Wakefield defence now is getting a good testing. Here comes Cook to Maguire. And Maguire makes the first mistake they've made for ten minutes, David. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what Wakefield needed. They've got the respite now. They've just got to hold this ball for five tackles, get as far up the field as they can, a good long kick and chase, and let's work hard in defence. That's the only thing they can do. Keep the ball off the Sheffield side for as long as they can. Richard Slater there finding no respite and getting shoved well back. He's got his Spencer. He comes in and gets to the 20-metre line. At Wakefield, Vic Fritz then, he's trying to get it. And the Sheffield defence has uh, really come up trump so far. No, no Wakefield forward actually running. And we're on fifth and last and probably we've only gained about six or seven metres there. That's going to be back to Nigel Wright and needs a good kick from him this time. It gets over halfway where Mark Gamson just going to let it go, go in a touch. So that's a little bit of respite for, uh, for Wakefield with the ball going in the touch. Gives them a chance to uh, get a good deep breath and uh, get themselves set ready for the... Uh, Sheffield leading ball, David. Well, that's right, because Sheffield at the moment got the tails well and truly up in the air, and they'll get obviously gained a lot of confidence from those two quick tries. Got to try and stem the flow, though, Ian. As Gary Jack gets caught with the ball. Midfield. Here comes Maguire. Maguire looking for somebody to pass to. Gets up and plays it quick. Here comes Michael. Michael tries a dummy with plunging inside, but uh, Wakefield not falling for that. Andy Mason and Richard Slater make the tackle. Cook gives it to Timmy Lum. Longer ball to Aston. Longer ball then to uh, 14, which is Andy Young who's come on. So bringing it back this way. Aston to Timmy Lum to Farrell. Got a bit of an overlap, but uh, Farrell there, well taken by Richard Slater. Andy Mason then comes in. So Maguire, we're on the fifth and last. Aston under pressure. Puts a nice kick down into the Wakefield 20 where David Jones picks up. David Jones comes into the middle. Met strongly by the chasing Sheffield defence. He's in centre field. Nigel Bella acting half back. Goes across. Trying to get good yardage and Wakefield crowd behind him at that. Trying to get back in some areas where they can probably score some more points and just bridge the gap a little bit. Here comes John Glancy, trying to get up to halfway. Darren Fritz just took his time there, getting up a bit. Nigel Wright, looking for an opening, makes a lovely opening, Nigel Wright gets through again, keeps his feet. Lovely run there from Nigel Wright. All afternoon he's made some good runs like that. And there he gets a penalty, being held down in the tackle by Dave Michael. Probably only on to his shirt, and that's a silly mistake from Michael. Is it too early, Ian, to pick the man of the match? Because I think this... You're going for Nigel Wright? I think he's done enough, the young 18-year-old, to, uh, to grab the White Rose trophy. I think he's been an exceptional player. He's, he's, created, he's scored a nice try himself, and uh, he's made a couple. So, Ian, what can I say? Well, I'm biased to be with my man of match at half-time. Well, what can I say, Ian? You know, I mean, this. I don't think... Actually, I don't think he has... He hasn't actually scored a try, he's kicked a goal, but he's made two tries, Ian, and uh, he's made some absolutely superb breaks in the centre of the field. He's cut the Sheffield defence to ribbons on numerous occasions, and I think uh, this lad thoroughly deserves the White Rose Trophy. So it's Benson now who's uh, going to attempt this kick back on the field after these ten minutes in the sim bin, and uh, Sheffield have made the substitution back uh, with uh, Lawton coming back on for you. Waddell, he's done his... Uh, 30 minutes or whatever he does here with L nowadays. So Benson, 30 metres out, nearly enough. Just to the right-hand side of the post. It looks to have struck it well, and uh, tell from the cheers there that uh, 
that is over. So, uh, so Gary Spencer bringing the ball out. Jeff Bagnell, team captain, getting his troops sorted out in that 20 meter area, giving him a little bit of respite. Here comes Vic Fritz. He's had a big game so far. He was in the running for man of the match, I felt, at one stage in the first half. Gone a little bit quiet though of late. Probably finding the pace of the game just a little tough for him at the moment, but he'll come again. Oh, Gary Price, I thought he'd uh, just made another little mistake there, but uh, we're on the fifth and last. Back to right, puts a superb kick in. There's Nigel Wright, well down the field. That's well into the Sheffield 20 where Blanche just touches it with his foot and it's all on. Blanche trying to come up this outside past David Jones, but he won't get far. Jack in at acting half, back to Michael and the Wakefield tacklers there in numbers. Trying to pin Sheffield down in this half of the field, not should give any silly penalties away. Here comes Farrell. Tough customer, strong lad. Had, had many chances so far. Wakefield pinning Sheffield down this area of the field. Richard Slater getting entangled up there with Lum and that's Aston with the kick back down field to, towards the Wakefield uh, 20 where Andy Wilson lets it goes into touch. Just uh, passing the time on, going for the, the scrum. How long to go, David? Well, I make it about 15 plus injury time and there's not been a great deal of that, Ian, has there? No, there hasn't, David. Just uh, the stoppages while Benson has been taking the kicks as Jeff Bagnall uh, comes away from the scrum. Farrell, the loose forward, following him all the way, but uh, makes valuable yardage. Andy Wilson has a little go against his former teammates from acting halfback. Doesn't get very far and had many chances, Andy so far this afternoon been out for five games with the, the shoulder injury so Bagnell looks for the gap tries uh, to get through it to uh, Slaughton who's back on spotted that and Nigel Wright then comes into the line kicks down for that's a beautiful kick that's rolling towards the corner flag that's probably going to go that's too good a kick that's just going to go touching goal at one time it looked to be going in just near the corner flag David yeah, it did. It was an absolutely superb kick, rolling point to point, over and over again. And it looks as if it was just going to nip into that uh, top corner there, Ian, but it didn't. But however, Sheffield have still got to bring it away from deep inside their own half. So Sheffield just over their own 20. That's Lum. Lum's in acting half back. Gives it to Aston on this side. Gary Jack. Uh, links but it uh, goes to Maguire himself captain he's trying to inspire his team as well plays the ball pretty quick to Michael Aston longer ball that looked a little bit of a knock on there a little bit of a low pass there from Aston so the pressure of Wakefield on Broadbent uh, just make it fumble that so it gives Wakefield a chance to uh, uh, put a bit of pressure now on Sheffield from this scrum and uh, Paul Carr second row man coming on for Pro Paul Brobent. I think the attendance seven and a half thousand. Did I hear correct, David? I didn't quite hear it. Ian, I was uh, just wrapped up in uh, the substitution there. But uh, it certainly looks a big crowd when you look to this far end. But uh, when you look at the empty spaces over the new development side on this stand, you can understand why there's probably only seven thousand here. Fritz then on the charge. He's in 10 metres now of the Sheffield line. Wakefield coming back, wanting to add more to this uh, points than they've already got as Bagnell bobbing and weaving, ducking and diving, trying to get in there. Right. Billy Conway gives it to Bit Fritz. I think he's after scoring this afternoon. He's tried everything possible to get over that Sheffield line. Hasn't managed it so far. Oh, lovely ball there from Billy Conway to Gary Price. And it's under the sticks. Well, and that's another present for, for Linda there, Gary. I hope Linda's just hung on long enough for you to get back to the hospital tonight to see the birth of your child. But however, if you don't make it, that's a super present, superb present for the newborn baby and Linda. Well done, Gary. 
well done Linda and well done Wakefield because now I believe, firmly believe, that that is definitely beyond Wake, uh, Sheffield's reach now Ian. And that's successful from Benson so that makes the score now Wakefield 29, Sheffield 12. So they withstood that to good 10 minutes but like I said earlier David every team has a time when they're they're on a roll and Sheffield's had that little bit but uh, for the rest of the time it's been all Wakefield yeah the, the, obviously the onslaught came uh, about well just five minutes into the second half and they scored 12 points in a matter of five minutes and it looked for, at one stage as if Sheffield were going to major uh, have a major fight back but some superb breaks by Nigel Wright and some good finishing by his teammates have uh, stopped the rot and so far wait for opportunity now and in a very very commanding position with only approximately 11 minutes left here comes John Grancy getting the valuable yardage upfield getting the good uh, following of Wakefield supporters you can hear them singing you'll never walk alone behind the post there just trying to give the lads a lift all set up looks like it's going to be a kick downfield Nigel Wright in behind his wall of players and that's another good strong kick Gary Jack uh, just misjudged it goes over his head and look at the chasers up there two four six seven Wakefield players and uh, spotting Gary Jack not getting him any room at all and Gary Jack there going for the penalty Darren Fritz just shoved him over and here he comes inspiration to his lads Gary Jack still thinks of a chance still trying to go still trying to get something out of this game Aston ball to Andy Young who's come on Paul Carr second row lad who's come back on for Broadbent here's Cook the hooker making a little break round acting half back little dummy one way little dummy the other brings play inside the Wakefield half trying to play the ball to himself then Billy Conway makes the tackle on his opposite number but to Sheffield there from Paul Carr he's seen a little bit of a gap and he's going for it brings play to him ten 10 metres of the Trinity 20. Looked to knock on there, did he? Oh, he didn't like that. Mark Gamson, and it looked like a Trinity player were interfering with play, David. Yeah, Jeff Bagnell there just stuck his foot out as far as I'm concerned and uh, just stopped the Sheffield man from picking that ball up cleanly and uh, the referee gave a knock on. So, yeah, it obviously caused a, a bit of upset in the crowd. Sheffield fans down below us here and they really did have a shout at that one, but... Uh, no excuse for kicking the ball away. It is a technical offence and it can be punished with 10 minutes in the sim bin. Thank you, David, for those comments. So Gary Spencer linked up in the attack now. Wakefield in possession. Centre field, just 10 metres over their own 20 metre line. Nigel Bell. Is it? A little bit of something happening there, David. Can you see? Farrell and uh, Billy Conway just knocked uh, and it uh, looks like Farrell's uh, just getting a little bit uh, upset David yeah well I can't understand why I mean I can honestly see why there are obviously frustration setting in but obviously uh, all this you know I mean there was nothing wrong with the uh, with the tackle there Nigel Bell didn't do anything in that tackle certainly he lost the ball and he just went to grab the ball back which is what you would normally do as an instinct but Farrell tried to make something of it probably did something in the tackle which the Wakefield players didn't like and obviously they responded to that and it certainly looks that Farrell's been penalised he has and that's that's been Sheffield's game all the first half and for part of this second half and the frustration can only get worse if they continue to do these things just a bit of lack of discipline then David yeah I think so Ian and I think Gary Etherington will say that to his lads you know when they actually sit back and reflect on this game so it's Nigel right then Eight minutes left as uh, John Gansley gets carried back inside his own half there by Sheffield Eagles tacklers. Nigel Bell just fumbles. Ball goes to Paul Carr. Australian second row trying to go outside Richard Slater, but uh, Richard's got a little bit of pace and here's a good tackler. Gary Jack linking with the attack. Gary Jack still tries a dummy, but uh, well taken there by... Nigel Wright, who's got penalised for head-eye. 
nothing wrong with Richard Slater down below. Quick tap, Aston, long ball there to Price, got it overlap. Mark Gamson, is he through? Got Gary Spencer to beat, and he scores in the corner, does he? Gary Spencer there, a little bit uh, lacking. Molested on his own try line, David, and uh, so the Sheffield's still coming back, David, still wanting to score. Yeah, quick hands there, and uh, Sheffield took full advantage of that uh, quick tap, threw it out to the right-hand side of the park. Wakefield Trinity very thin in cover on that area of the field, and uh, Sheffield then, Gamson, he managed to round Peter Benson and just beat Gary Spencer to the corner. So 29-16, Nigel Wright going to kick off. And uh, we've just heard that Nigel Wright has got the man of the match award, David. So uh, we've both been proved right. Here comes Gary Jack, inspiration for Sheffield. So we've more or less said everything about Nigel Wright than David. Yes, I mean, obviously, I mean, he's been the best footballer on the field today. You know, as he's, he's, he's split the, the Sheffield defence to ribbons on numerous occasions, he's, he's made those couple of tries, he's thoroughly deserved it, and I'm really, really pleased for the lad, 18-year-old. It looks as if at one stage this weekend that he wouldn't make the game through injury, which he sustained at Salford, a rib injury, but he's managed to come through that, and he's proved to David Topless and to everybody at Wakefield he's definitely a star for the future. Knock on there from Sheffield, trying to play a little bit of catch-up rugby. Just below us here, looks like Richard Slater's got a heavy knock, he's got a little bit of cut above his eye, and it looks like Mark Webster's going to come back on for him. He's coming off his Richard, he's that type of lad, he doesn't want to come off the field, he, he wants to be on that field when that game finishes, but uh, getting a good round of applause from the crowd there as Mark Webster comes back on for him. So, Trinity with possession, just on the 20 metre line. We're entering the last five minutes as David Jones from acting half-back. Here comes Fritz, Fritz going, flicks a little ball out backwards and that looks like a knock-on there from uh, Billy Conway. Yes, David? Those teeth got in a mess there, eh? Fritz flicks the ball back, eh? What did you say? <laughs> I thought I got it just exactly right. <laughs> And uh, looks like Richard Goddard's going to come on. He's going to come on for Andy Wilson. Andy Wilson's still uh, over the far side. I don't think he's got any injury there as uh, Sheffield's got the ball. I think it's just a matter of uh, getting Richard Goddard on there for uh, for the game to say he's played in the Yorkshire Cup final, which would be nice also. He's only 18. He's a little bit younger than uh, Nigel Wright, actually. Uh, Richard still playing the academy, whereas Nigel's just two months too old to play in the academy. But uh, two promising lads for the future for Wakefield Trinity as uh, Sheffield get a penalty for hooking the ball out, then not getting the 10, and then getting the scrum because they didn't take the tap in their eagerness, didn't go on the mark to take the tap, and so that's going to be a scrum down with Wakefield head and ball. Yes, it is, and... On comes Richard Goddard then. I don't think Andy Wilson will begrudge. Richard, uh, a chance to play in the Yorkshire Cup final. As you say, Ian, there's definitely nothing wrong with Andy Wilson. It's uh, David Topless giving Richard Goddard a run, and I think it's well-deserved. So here comes Nigel Wright. Wakefield in possession, took a bit of an heavy knock there. Has it hurt his ribs a little bit? No. Mark Webster goes from acting half-back. He's had a powerful game with John Glancy up front for Wakefield. Early stages of this game, they were really doing some tremendous stuff. Benson, Benson. Slips the ball out. Ball goes backwards. Wakefield still trying to keep it alive. But the Tiger is tackling the Sheffield, shoving Wakefield back. Bagnell took a little bit of a knock. John Glancy. Billy Conway singling, I don't know if he's going to try a kick or something. Nigel Belly might be, might be setting up for the drop goal, I think, David. We're on the fifth and last. That's a bad ball, that could be back to one, is it? Jeff Bagnall, that looks a little bit too strong. But uh, I thought they were setting up for the drop goal. 
Well, why not? You know, you go into the opposition's 20 metre line and you come away with a point. But uh, Jeff Bagnell just a little bit too hard with that kick. But Ian, the crowd are whistling now. I make it that we're into the last few minutes of this game. And uh, with the score at 29 16, the cup should be Wakefield Trinity's Ian. Yes, and Wakefield penalised offside. And it'll be the first time they've won the Yorkshire Cup since 1964. And the last time they won a cup was 1969 when they won the championship. And I actually played in that team, David. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so it's been a long time coming, but uh, we're all dead chuffed that it uh, looks like today is going to be that day to, uh, to lay the ghost at Wakefield Trinity. Well, Ian, and if you remember, our alliance side defeated Sheffield Eagles in the second round of the Yorkshire Senior Competition. We're into the semi-finals. You never know, Ian, we could have a, a cup double this year. I hope we're right, David. As Sheffield then come at Wakefield defence, they're getting inside the Wakefield half. Here comes Tim Lum, trying to set players up, going on his own from acting halfback. Slings a wild ball out at uh, Richard Goddard, picks up, so uh, Wakefield in possession, 10 metres from the halfway centre field. Billy Conway then to Mark Webster. Mark Webster still going strong. And Wakefield a little bit bunched there, David. Not, not got much width to their game. It looks like... Uh, all they're going to do is just play the tackles out as David Jones runs uh, crab-wise across the field and uh, I think they're just waiting for the final whistle. Well, I can see here the two timekeepers directly below is checking up the makeshift blow horn there to give the whole turn the final whistle. So I think it's only a matter of seconds now. So Wakefield Trinity's name, I think, goes on the 1992 uh, John Smith Yorkshire Cup. Darren Fritz then uh, just getting up to play the ball. Bagnell with a little kick downfield. Nice little kick. Rolls inside the uh, 20 of uh, Sheffield's. Gary Jack, long ball out to Michael. Michael looking for room, trying to get round Andy Mason, but uh, then he passes on to uh, Plange, who gets knocked down by Michael. And uh, we're just a uh, few metres short of the halfway. Timmy Lum, long ball to Aston, to Maguire. Maguire out in the centres, got Richard Price there with him. But Richard Goddard uh, makes the tackle on him. So it's Sheffield with, with play. That's a kick down then. Kick and chase from uh, Timmy Lum. Gary Spencer feels that ball. Beats Gary Lum, does he? No, he just hangs on to his shirt. And there with the final tackle, it's a cup victory for Wakefield Trinity by 29 points to 15, 16, is it, David? And it's been thoroughly deserved. Been on top, there's just one point in the game where Sheffield came back in the second half, but it's been a day for Wakefield Trinity laying the ghost of the 1960s, I believe, starting a new era of the 1990s, David. What a way to start by winning the White Yorkshire Cup. 29-16, the score then, Ian. Absolutely superb support here at Ellen Road for Wakefield Trinity. All the players now moving towards the cup end here at Ellen Road. They're supporting this Wakefield Trinity side, and Wake oh, Sheffield could have come back, but as it is, Jeff Bagnell, he's picked up the Yorkshire Cup here for Wakefield Trinity, and there'll be celebrations tonight in the coach house at Wakefield Trinity site at Bellevue. There'll be beer flowing, there'll be people singing. There'll be celebrations for Gary Spencer and Gary Price especially. Obviously, they've, had, they've not had a great deal to cheer in the league this season. No points from six games, but we've won the Yorkshire Cup, Ian. And, you know, we can, the Lion can only go from strength to strength, can't it? It's got to give us confidence to do something now in the league. Well, yes, in the league, David, we, we haven't got any points, but like I've been telling everybody, we've been playing well. It's just that bit of luck that's eluded us. And today we got the luck early where that kick from uh, a Wakefield player struck him and Slay to score the try. You need luck in the game. That we've got a share today, I feel. Yes, we've had a fair share, but uh, we've also fought very, very hard in defence. We've stopped this Sheffield machine, who have defeated some really top sides this season. We've stopped them playing the football. Wakefield Trinity have come out on top this afternoon. Marvellous feeling. 
for the lads, I'm sure. The cup then is with Andy Mason at the moment, and he's walking towards our commentary position directly below us. Taking the applaudits from the Wakefield Trinity contingent of supporters directly below us. Marvellous occasion for Wakefield. Celebrations will probably start immediately as the lads hit the changing rooms. Have a few interviews with especially the man of the match, Nigel Wright. Well, here we are outside of the dressing rooms here, and with me is David Topless. It's the first trophy that Wakefield Trinity have won for some 24 years. David, how do you feel about it? I'm absolutely delighted. It's, uh, it, it, it's been an hard week, really, because we, we played abysmal last weekend. Um, but I know we'd, we've got the forwards for the job today. It's the best pack I've had out all season, and they did the business the first half, and then Jeff Bagnell and Nigel Wright took over. Speaking about Nigel Wright, an absolutely tremendous performance from an 18-year-old lad. He's obviously a star for the future, isn't he? That's right. He hasn't got, got to go too big, but he, uh, he's got to keep his feet on, on the ground. But I was highly delighted with Nigel, his kicking game and his distribution, and he come up with the short breaks, you know, to make tries, and he had a dream game, really, for an 18-year-old kid. He did, David. Just a spell in the second half, when Sheffield Eagles scored 12 points in about five minutes, did, did you ever think at one stage that because we've been commanding it so long that we might, you know, it might fall from his grasp? No, I never really thought it would uh, fall from his grasp, but I know that Sheffield, and I told the lads at half-time, that Sheffield were better than that, that they produced the first half. There's a lot of good players off Sheffield. That's why the, the win is a very good win. They, they feel they can beat any team from behind, and they have done in the previous rounds of the Archer Cup. But this time I felt they'd let us get a bit too far. You know, we, we, we played well to get that 21-0 lead, and uh, they couldn't catch up. Well, also here with me today is Gary Spencer. Gary, you scored a, an absolutely superb try this afternoon under the pulse. It's, it's been a superb week for you, really. Wife Bev, just given birth to your daughter, Olivia. What were you feeling at the time when you went over for the try? Um, well, obviously, as you've been saying, it's, uh, it was all down to Nigel Wright. He's had a terrific game today for an 18-year-old. and Hopefully, that'll just lift his confidence, and it's also lifted the confidence in the side. So, all I had to do, really, was uh, support, as a number of players did today off Nigel. If we followed him today, he was just breaking through. It seemed to be at will. So, all I had to do was take the ball off Nigel and go under the post. But, obviously, like you said, with my wife just having uh, his first little girl, on Friday night, it's just been a tremendous week for me. It's a week I'll never forget, and uh, I'll be going to visit her tonight before I have a good drink with the lads, and uh, I'll be showing her this winner's medal. And it's just a dream come true. And I'm just, I'm just pleased for myself and pleased for all the lads because we've taken some stick this season. Sometimes rightly so. Last Sunday, we had a terrible game, really, in uh, a game that we should have really won. But up until that, we've been playing decent football. But we've just been making silly mistakes and just taking wrong options. But we've shown today by uh, getting that position 21 mil up that we're a team to be reckoned with on this day. And hopefully this will be the corner that we can turn and have a good night tonight, get down to it, and then do leads on Wednesday. And then obviously we've got a week off and the John play. And let's just hope we can, like David says, go on from this and get some valuable league points. Well, with me here today as well is Wakefield Trinity's captain. The Australian Jeff Bagnall, he's clutching this Yorkshire Cup, as you can see, and this is for his family back home more than anything, but it's also a good thing for Wakefield Trinity supporters to see some silverware in the grasp of our captain. So, Jeff, today you must have been really, really pleased with the performance, firstly, of Nigel Wright, and secondly, of the whole team, because it was absolutely tremendous. Yeah, David, we'll just keep it short. We played really well, and uh, Nigel had a terrific game, and, uh, but I thought the forwards laid the foundations, big Fritzy and and also uh, Webby and Belly, of course, and, y and young, young John Glancy. But uh, we all played well, especially the forwards in the first half. And um, as you were saying, I'd just like to show my family this trophy back home. It's a long while since I've won one. And uh, I did it all the way over here, 12,000 miles away from home, but I'm thinking of them all the time. And uh, to my old man, we finally won a trophy. Superb game. and every